go. Hi, and this is a training for the Phantom high speed camera. Uh, the Phantom is here and it has a lens on the top. This is a, a Canon lens, a Canon EF lens. And if you hold this clip and you rotate it, the lens will come out. And they have covers for each side, and all the lenses are stored underneath in the uh, Pelican case. If you have to install one, you have the red dot here. Just line them up and rotate clockwise until this clicks. You can take off the lens cover. Um, to get it, everything in focus, this camera should be at the maximum end of travel on this uh, podium. And if you need something that's uh, taller than what I'm about to do, then you can take this camera off with the screw in the back. You can place it somewhere to the side and shoot from a side, side view if you need to do that. Um, the software is uh, PCC 3.4 on the top here. And the demo that I'm going to do for you is a nasal spray bottle. So under the tabs over here, you're going to go to live. And for the camera, just make sure that this number is selected here. Um, in a live view, it's going to appear very dark. Uh, don't worry about that. Just make sure that you have everything in focus. So. A good way to focus on stuff if everything is smooth is put like a dollar bill or something with a lot of like text or something that you can focus on and that'll give you a good um, depth. If you look at the parameters here, you have uh, resolution, which will control how much area you're viewing all at once, uh, sample rate, which is your frames per second. If you have something like an actuating device, uh, something like a thousand to three thousand frames per second should be enough to capture that. Um, if you have what I have, which is like a, a lot of small droplets, you may like to do a higher resolution, and then you'll be limited in how much, uh, how many frames per second you can go. So it's all about like data collection rate. So a very small image, you could go to very high frames per second, and you could capture very fast uh, events. Um, but for this one, it's just 1920 by 1080, and we'll do frames per second up to 1500. Then I'm going to turn this light on. As long as you're illuminating the stage here. And then I have an exposure time, which is uh, like a shutter speed. So if you say frames per second and you do one over that number, that's going to give you how, how long in seconds is each frame. And your exposure time should be a little bit less than that. If you go higher than that, you'll get a little bit of blur in your pictures because your shutter is open for longer than one frame. So 1500, I, I don't know, you can go slightly lower. Exposure index is just underneath that, which will artificially kind of boost the light to something that's more appealing to you, like a little more easy to see. The higher you go, a little bit more noise in the picture, but um, not too bad. So you can position, I'm gonna position it here. Um, you can click capture on the bottom and that kind of gets it ready. Under here you'll see a duration. This is the maximum amount of time that it's going to collect for. So what you'll do is kind of like have your mouse over this trigger button. Go ahead and do your event or if you have an event that happens after you soak it in water for a while, uh, let the event happen and then when it happens click trigger. And that time will be how much time you have after the event happens to actually click it uh, before you miss the event. So we'll do that really, really quick here. We'll hold the nasal spray, fire it, click trigger. Now to process this data, go to the play tab and zoom in a little bit over here. So we're gonna hold this dark uh, frame slider here and move over until your event happens. So right here, it's sprayed. Now go before it. And under your play speed and options, you're gonna choose like maybe the 15 or 20 frames per second and click play. At the same time, you can click this mark bracket. That was really close actually. So we may have to go a little bit further back. Hit play. 
And this is kind of set trimming the front of your video. And you'll see it's starting to move. Okay. Kind of missed it, but it's, it's okay. After your event ends, click the second bracket and that trims your video to a uh, short length, which just means your file size is gonna be a lot smaller. After that's done, um, you can click like this ping pong, which will enable it to go back and forth. You can change the frames per second to like make it happen faster. You can visualize things a little bit better. After that, um, you can turn off this light it's actually very warm, so if you had water, it's going to warm it up a little bit. And uh, to save the file, drop this down, click Save Cine to File, and save it as like a .mp4 under this headline. If you save it as .cine, uh, you can only open it in this software, so don't do that. Click this .mp4, and then you can save it wherever you like. And it will start to uh, save and give you a loading bar down here. Just wait till that's finished. Go back to live and click capture and yes. And then you can do another recording. Um, would recommend as much light as possible in your images, which will enable you to go to higher frame rates, smaller exposure times, capture like faster events and things like that. Just give you better quality overall. We analyze speeds and things like that in a software called Kenovia, which is also on this computer, which is here. Doing that, you can go frame by frame with the right arrow, and you can mark off uh, distances, and you can measure the distance and divide by the time. And uh, you should also make a note of your frames per second because you're gonna need how, much second, how many seconds have elapsed for each frame to do that calculation of speed. So, uh, that's the tutorial for using the, the Phantom high-speed camera, and good luck.